Hello, my name is Sandra, and as you can see, today's activities are going to be using bean bags. And we're going to not only have fun with the bean bags, but I'm going to give you some activity ideas to help your students learn dynamics, tempo, largo, presto, all these really fun musical things that we want them to learn using a bean bag. If you haven't used bean bags before, there is another video you might want to go watch. I have a couple of them where I share some bean bag activities that you can go watch, and it has lots of tips for beginning bean bag activities. Today's activity I'm going to share for our younger children is just a steady beat activity. We'll start with the very simplest thing, and then we'll work up to some upper elementary activities. <laughs> So for the first activity, I'm going to have every student have their own bean bag or something to toss. You can use Beanie Babies work too for this. So if you have these and you don't have bean bags, that's fine. Give everybody one of these. And you know, you might want to have them pat the beat first before you give them bean bags. Um, that's just something you can decide. So you might want to have them feel it first before you give them this or just get the bean bags out and let's do it with bean bags. So we're going to use a bean bag and then I'm going to play something that will be playing a steady beat. So if you're playing piano, that's fine. It doesn't matter what the instrument is. We're just going to find something that's going to be able to play a very steady beat. I'm going to ask the students to toss to that steady beat. And see, can you match your toss to what you're hearing? And there's lots of ways to toss. So the younger they are, the closer we want to keep it. So you might just have them do this. Four-year-olds can do this. A little bit older, then they can toss it up. And then you can always stop them and say, what happens when I go like that? And then they'll say, oh, well, that takes longer and I can't keep it on the beat. That's what you're going for. And so then you can say, well, what, what kind of toss do we want to do? Oh, we just want to keep it right here, tossing. And we could pretend it's a piece of pie or it's a little kitty and we want to be soft and gentle with it. So it can turn this very simple activity into something really fun for younger children to do. And we're just going to play the beat to a musical instrument. After we do that activity, it's time to add in some music. So our dynamic words that we're going to use are going to be presto and largo. So for largo, we're going to use Moonlight Sonata. Dun, 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 dun. Nice and slow. And then for the fast or the presto tempo, we're going to use Les Toreadors from Carmen Bizet's uh, opera. And we're going to have the students respond to the music. I recommend playing a very short selection of the music first. Let's, let's see if they figured out what you're saying. Because just because I think I'm saying it, I'm talking teacher talk, I may not have communicated it for them to really get what I'm saying. Like, what does it mean to toss the beanbag on the beat? Like, what is she saying? So if they don't get what you said, or they don't get the examples, like you're gonna toss it like a rabbit, or we're gonna toss it like it's a turtle, you know, whatever your analogies and your teaching methods have been, let's check first before we start walking around or giving them a longer selection of music to play. So one tip would be, is just play it for 10 to 20 seconds and then just see. And then you could talk about it. Was that song fast like the rabbit or slow like the turtle? And then have them talk about it and then say, well, everybody show me what's, what is your fast? What is your rabbit toss? And what's your turtle toss? So you can go really slow through this activity and really be checking along the way to make sure they are really internalizing and learning the concept. We don't have to just turn on the music and then say, okay, it's fast. Everybody toss fast. Okay, so slow it down and bring it down. You're going to be in the car with them for 35 minutes. So you can take the whole class time to do just this activity and that's going to work out okay.
You might want to tell a story before you get out the bean bags, and that story would be the tortoise and the hare story. And you could just tell a shortened version of that, and then talk about fast and slow and presto and largo. And then we're going to play a game and have them show you the animals, and then you can put on the music. And then we can make. You're going to see their brains going connect, 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 connect. It's so awesome to see when that happens. So the more verse activities. And different ways of telling and、um, showing that you can do four or five different ways before you do the activity. Your activity is going to go better because you're giving their brains time to really hear, think, and process what it is you want them to do with that bean bag. So that's just a little tip to help you, especially teaching like four, five, six-year-olds. After you play the music selections for a short time, then you can play them for a little bit longer. And I would keep it very simple with this age. Maybe just have the two different selections of music, and not try to be too tricky. Especially when you've been teaching what you want them to do in the same lesson. So you can be tricky later, three or four times later. But today it's just about them. You want to build their confidence to know when I hear fast sounds or fast music, I know to go like this. And when I hear slow music, I know to go like this. So hopefully, those are some ideas to help you with playing passive beanbag on the steady beat activity and make it a little more meaningful and、uh, give the students a really long chance to really learn what you're talking about. So a way to adapt that activity for your second and third and maybe even fourth graders for fun would be to use a different selection of music. And、uh, you might already know what I'm going to say, but "In the Hall of the Mountain King" by Edvard Grieg、uh, is a really good one to see if they can toss that beanbag on the beat and keep it going. That leads me into the activity number two, which would be more for the second through fourth grade ages, where we're going to be passing on the beat. When I first start the activity, I have them put it on the floor, and we just pass. Like this, we're passing it. We're not tossing it. It stays on the floor. We're sliding. We're just sliding whatever it is around, and we're really working on looking, listening, and helping each other as a team go on the beat. Now, you can do this in a big circle, or you can break your class into four groups and do it smaller. Two groups, whatever works for your classroom. But just have that in your head. What's going to work best for my Students, and you might find class Mrs. Jones wants to do it in a whole class, and they will work together to make that happen. But you might find Mr. Smith's class. You're going to need to break them into four groups, and then selectively choose those groups, and hope they will work together in their small group to play the beat. And you can turn it into competition. You can say, "I'm going to be watching." To see which group will play the best, lots of ways to use、uh, some of your classroom management skills while you're playing with games. That's why I really like these kind of games in the classroom, especially with those fourth and fifth graders. All right, so we're going to play the pass game. The first time we go, we're going to slide it around, and then the second time we're going to practice passing it. Open pass, open hands, pass, 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 pass that way. Or you could do it. Individuals each have a mean back too. You know, these are just some things you have to look and see what you're dealing with with your kiddos. So those are some ideas. I really feel that if you will play a short section of music and just have them practice, you know, twenty seconds. First, stop, assess, have them share, have them point out things they need to do better, have them help each other, and then try again and really turn it. Over to that circle of children to play the beat together. That's the fun part of the games is that it we're really encouraging them to work together. Because when we sing, we are singing together. When we play instruments, we're playing together. And playing games together is actually going to help them do both those other things in your classroom. So I love beanbag games, and I found great success with them. I hope you'll give this game a try with your、uh, second through fifth graders. The next beanbag game can be adapted for all grades. We're, it's we're going to play hot potato. So the way to play hot potato, in case you don't know, is you want to make a circle. Have everybody sit in the circle, 
And I like to talk about how we're a team and we're all going to help each other and work together. And we're going to be passing the beanbag while the music is on. And when the music stops, the person holding the beanbag is going to have a special task to do. But we're going to think, what do I want them to do when they get the beanbag? We're not just going to play hot potato and they're out and they go sit and do nothing. They have to do something musical. So whatever it is you've been working on, if you've been teaching your fifth graders uh, and they've been composing melodic phrases on the xylophone, then get four xylophones or whatever, if you have your stations, or put four small ones in the middle of your circle. And then when a student gets the beanbag, they're going to go in and play on the xylophone, whatever it is you've been working on. So whenever I play games in the classroom, I like there to be escalations. So we may start off simply with one beanbag, and we're going to play the music like hot potato, and we're going to go around the circle, pass, 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 music stops. Ah, I got the beanbag, now what do I do? So then you can change what that doing thing is for each grade level. So for kindergarten, just put a drum in the middle and that student gets to go play the beat next time and then do hot potato and have a stop and then they trade places. It's a really fun game in kindergarten and they love it. First grade, maybe add in some other instruments. And in first grade, now we can have two beanbags. Maybe the third time it stops, bring in a second beanbag. Now you'll have two students who have to go to the middle of a circle and they'll have to do the thing that you've chosen, you've organized. What I found with second grade now is put some rhythm cards in there. They just take the top rhythm card, they put it in front of them, one, two, here we go. They have to do it fast. You might want to count to eight beats and then we're going to go and start the music again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have to have the rhythm card in front of them. <laughs> they have to have rhythm sticks ready. One, two, here we go. And they have to go and play until the music stops. <laughs> and then again, you can have uh, maybe up to five beanbags. I wouldn't go more than five, then it, it gets very chaotic. Uh, but you have four or five different instruments in the middle and your rhythm cards, or like I said, melodic cards for the older students, and you can have them go in and do something. Another fun thing you can do in the middle is body percussion. If you have body percussion cards, you can put those in. If you've created some presentations and you are one of those that likes to project things on your board all the time, which I did, I would just have slides of what I wanted them to do in the middle. So it was all organized, a lot less set up. I just put the instruments in the middle. I had the presentation. And then when the music stops, bam, they go to the middle. Or you could even have them go stand on a line and do what's on the screen. And then they rejoin the circle. So I like using beanbag games to help them play, sing, move, show what we've been working on. And you know, this is just a really fun way. It brings the class together and it doesn't have to be competition. It's just everybody sharing and playing a game together, but we're playing on the beat and we're learning and practicing our music things that we've been working on all year. Really good end of year activity. Another fun thing that I'm sure you've seen, it's been on TikTok and Instagram and everything, is where you put a staff on your floor. And I did this actually a long time ago, so it is fun to see that this game hasn't gone away. It's still being done. So I used Velcro strips that I had rolls of, and I happened to have been given those rolls of Velcro. And so it was easy for me to make a musical uh, staff on my floor. But you can also use painter's tape, and uh, I'm sure, you know, there's lots of different things. You can use laminated paper and tape it down just for that class. You know, there's lots of ways. Put a staff on the floor, and then you're going to use the beanbag to play the game. And we're going to toss the beanbag, and where it lands, uh, the students are going to call out the note. And I found that game to be more successful with 4th, 5th, and 6th graders. 
So I'm really hoping that these games help you in your classroom, especially at the end of the year where everybody wants to be kept busy and there's lots of noise and energy. And so games are a really great way to channel all that energy. I hope you'll subscribe to this video. I appreciate you watching. Let's keep kids learning and moving with music.